shattering. He went to work and there was an earth shattering yeah, moment. A shattering, <laughs> earth shattering moment there. But I'm free. A, yeah, I think shortly after that, I had like a conversation with my boss where he's trying to explain certain uh, career moves I should make because it's important that I make more money so I can like. Uh, you know, pay the bills and start a family and something. And I'm like, what are you making at this my time? Inner, my inner voice is like, hey, I already got this. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> what? Hey everyone, Mike Rosart here with Jacob Lundfisker, author of EarlyRetirementExtreme.com and the book Early Retirement Extreme. We're going to do a quick walkthrough of Jacob's uh, life, Com effectively. Complicated life. <laughs> complicated <laughs> life. We'll try to be succinct, but we may go down rabbit holes at times. <laughs> we, we apologize for that. Um, <laughs> so, J Jacob, you grew up, you are born in Denmark. Yeah. We have a little bit of, of discussion about that. You're in Denmark. You're now a teenager. You've, you've got a camera. You've been working part-time job. Mm -hmm. You understand delayed gratification. Then, then sort of what happened from okay, there. Okay, yeah. So uh, I eventually graduated with a with a master's uh, degree, or what corresponds to a master's degree in physics uh, with physics. a side in uh, nice. mathematics. Uh, and then I get accepted into grad school in Switzerland. So, so Denmark to Switzerland. So I moved from Denmark to Switzerland, uh, and I kind of that uh, created like a fairly uh, large salary bump for me. Uh, so, so, the, in so the, you got paid for your PhD. I, yeah, so like, yeah, you get you get paid. So, in in the Danish higher education system, you actually every student gets a stipend if you get in. Oh, so okay. it's, it's it's more like uh, not everybody gets in. So it's it's like everybody gets a scholarship if you can get the scholarship. And right. And that's about I think uh, back then it was a little less. I think right now it's about six hundred dollars a month after tax. Okay. But only so a, very slim budget. Yeah, only one third gets in or some, something like that from high school. So you have to have like a certain GPA. You can't like pay your way and yes. like get something else. It's 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 pretty 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 hard, I would say. Okay. Um, How old are you at this point, by the way? You've moved uh, to Switzerland. You're oh, when I moved to Switzerland, I was twenty-four. Twenty-four. Okay. Twenty-four. I graduated. So I've been living on these six hundred dollars, you know, like savings from you know, like eighteen to twenty-four. Walk, walking instead of taking the bus, you know, never taking a cab when I can just walk ten kilometers. Yeah. Uh, but You're still like, living like a grad student. Still living like a pre-grad student. Yeah. <laughs> um, undergrad student. Undergrad student. Yes, yeah, smelly undergrad, <laughs> as we call it. Uh, that's actually a funny story with that story. So I, I. I I, I went went on a sale, kind of like a, a, a Black Monday, a Black Friday sale, where there was a bunch of uh, speakers. Uh, so I stood in line. I got the speakers, uh, saved up for them, probably two hundred dollars, but I didn't want to pay for like, like you know a quarter for a bus ticket. So I walked them like this, walked you know, them about home. forty pounds or something. Walked them home. And the next day, I could like barely lift my <laughs> arms. But yeah, it was, was kind of like this was my mentality. It just would be happily, you know, like uh, yes. spend the money on things I valued and not spend on things I didn't value. Right. But when I moved to Switzerland, then you suddenly you start getting paid, you know, like a stupendous salary as a grad student. So what is that in dollars? That's about $25 a year, $25,000 $25, a year. $25,000 a year, Yeah, okay. that's like an enormous sum of money here. Which back th like in that time was also a good amount of money as well. No, not really. I mean, I'm probably correcting it here. So maybe, yeah, it'll pay about $25,000. Oh, okay. It'll probably like 20000 for me back then. Back then. I mean, it was also in Swiss franc, of course, and exchange right. rates. Exchange but that's rates. about what it pays to be a grad student. And now you're like supposed to be a professional. You know, you have a master's degree in the STEM field. And it's like, uh, yeah. Yeah. Without being too conceited, it's probably the hardest one, except for maybe like higher math or something. Math. Right, right. Yeah. Well, this is a tricky thing, but you get paid 25K. But still, you know, the step up from $600 a month to like, you know, like K. Yeah. $1,800 a month uh, yeah. is, means that I could buy computers at a faster rate, <laughs> <laughs> uh, waste my money on a faster rate. So I did that for a while. Uh, I eventually ended up buying you know, a fast computer and a 23-inch CRT monitor. They didn't make them bigger at that time. Yeah. It cost $2,000 or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, regretfully. Um, and then uh, I stumbled on some kind of website about anti-consumerism. Uh, and it still exists. It's called verdant.net, I think. Oh, okay. And it was Verdant.net. Yeah, like green. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, and it was uh, talking about all the... We, 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 We've talked about how the, lin the linear economy works from like production to consumption. Yes. And this, this website talked about the waste stream. So essentially all the things we buy and then we throw them out and they end up... And you're like, hey, I, I'm in this uh, yeah, cycle of like, wasting. I'm exactly the problem, part of the problem, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, 
So I read about that and I was also beginning to get focused on like uh, um, geopolitics and, and resources, strategic resources like oil and energy. Okay. And I was like, whoa, I mean, we can't really live like this. It's not uh, sustainable. On. It's not sustainable. So uh, I, I changed my life there. Pretty much like went to cold turkey on my... Like, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and I had sort of realized this kind of like hedonic... Uh, a treadmill. I don't. I don't know if it's really a tre hedonic treadmill to uh, keep getting those little like drug jolts. Yeah, you get a little high. You get a little high when you buy yeah. something, and then after you just end up with like a lot of stuff. Sort of. Not in my case. It wasn't wasn't in like a landfill. It was just sitting in the in the attic. You know. Uh, yeah. Not not being used, collecting dust. Right. So I did uh, did a lot of those uh, things that sort of like became popular so it's now it's not a thing now sort of like as to be a minimalist and only have like 100 right. different things but no one was talking about it wasn't really counting it like that no so i just thought of it as like a living out of a suitcase which is like literally what i did i had a yeah. giant suitcase you know yeah. airline regulation maximum but i had everything i owned in that um so you're a minimalist before it was popular i was a minimalist were, before it was a thing yeah. looking for early retirement yeah, before, before it was, it a, was thing, a thing obviously uh, yeah and i did the buy nothing year before it was a thing uh, but I mean, right when that happened, I essentially stopped buying stuff because right. I was I was I was trying to figure out. Oh, let let's see what austerity feels like. What what is it like to live if you really cannot afford anything? So I just wanted right. to try it. So uh, for about a year, uh, well, I wasn't I wasn't I wasn't perfect. I bought two books because I just couldn't take it anymore. But that's what I that's what I spent. You broke down by two <laughs> books. <laughs> I broke, I broke down because I really like to read. I mean, I had yeah. like, tons of clearly. Books. Um, so I broke down and bought two books, and the only other thing I spent was was like on, on, on essentially food. Uh, I was darning my own underwear. <laughs> I mean, I was, I mean, I was really trying to yeah. learn all these little, little things, you know. And um, so after a year of, of that, I kind of learned, okay, what can I sort of like take? What's what's my limit? Okay, that's the limit, and it's actually not that bad when you get into it. And this is also the experience of everybody who tries this buy nothing uh, yeah. experiment, like. Uh, you have some serious withdrawal the first three months. You know, like, what am I going to spend the time on? If I can't research new things, I'm going to buy it. If I can't go shopping or something. Yeah. And then after about three months, you start finding other things. Oh, wow, that's more to life than shopping. Yeah. It just requires some effort or some alternative thinking. So I figured yeah. that one out. And so then, you're, you're off the treadmill. You're off the yeah. hedonic. And after uh, nine months, treadmill. it's like, yeah, I don't really miss shopping. I don't really think I can just go like... Uh, recreationally shopping again so now it's just changed now i just have sort of achieved the mind shift yes and this, is, this is like a super good exercise for for, for people to yeah. just try uh so i did i did all these like little experiments where you find you know you, you push yourself you find what you can do and then you step back a little that's that's essentially the way to go yeah uh, you test, find, you, test your limit then yeah, say this is where i'm more comfortable yeah, you find out what the range is essentially and where you sit on the range and then you just start constructing your life from there and um, the, 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 the third thing I did, so I told I, I said it was complicated, so there were three things. So the third yeah. thing was I, I began to read about uh, mortgages and the financial system because I had no idea about that. Uh, um, so especially in, 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 inside, the ste in, inside the STEM fields at that time, there was some kind of like certain disdain for business and economics. It's like, this is beneath us. We don't have to think about this thing. So we didn't. And it's, right. it's like stupid, but that's that's what it was. It's weird. So yeah. I didn't know anything about it. And in and, and the school system, they hadn't taught us anything. And we hadn't really been encouraged to seek it out. There were these career fairs, but that's, you know, like, that was about half a day in my entire career. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. entire school. In system. 25 years, right? Yeah, in 25 yeah. years. There was half a career day. There was one week spent, you know, as a student. I was following around some electrician. Just to see what it was like to work, I essentially carried his tools. <laughs> uh, and my financial education was uh, they dragged the school class down uh, to the local bank and they gave us like a, uh, a soda <laughs> and then like a one hour lecture about various bank products. So essentially a sales job, so yeah. like you can open these things. So I started reading about mortgages and then I did my own calculations. Uh, and found that, uh, wow, if you buy a house, you actually have to like pay interest for like you know, it doubles the price of the house in interest. Yeah. And me not being willing to spend a quarter on a bus ticket, I was like, that is not going to happen. You know? yeah. like, I'm going to save all the money. That's I'm not going to buy it in cash, right? <laughs> so I did that. Um, because the other thing was, 
What's that investment? Uh, uh, so you bought a house in Switzerland? No, no, I haven't bought a house. No, oh, okay. I didn't. But the plan was to buy a house. The right. plan was simply to start saving the money instead of spending it. Yes. So. Um, and the goal is not to buy stuff, but to buy a house. To buy a house. Essentially, I just moved to buy a bigger, bigger stuff. Yeah. But so an you can, asset. You can, you can put it like but that. But an asset that appreciates. Yeah, but I didn't think of it like that. It was just like I didn't want to buy anything with interest payment. Right. Uh, in interest payments. Uh, uh, the third, third, or fourth component to that was that whereas, like in the U.S., uh, investment is investing is pretty much like a national sport. Like everybody has at least heard of it. Whereas in in in, in Denmark, people just save up in bricks, essentially. They just buy, buy real estate, and that's it. And then whatever goes to equity, you know, because the interest uh, is highly deductible. But still, you know, that was too much for me. So, <laughs> um, and then. Um, after I graduated with a PhD, I was like 28 at that point, and I had saved like $90,000. So that's almost all of the stuff that had, uh, all, of, all, of the, all of my uh, stipend. I'd say almost all of it, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was like 80% of it or something. Something around that number. Yeah, really was that, that, that was my savings rate. So I was still, still I was living even, I, I, I would probably admit to saying cheaper, not frugal, because I was really just cutting because, I yeah. mean, everybody's, I mean, I, I too didn't know anything about how to, so for me too, it was also like sacrifices, right? Yeah. Because I didn't know any smart ways of doing it. Because I was starting right. like, you know, at the beginner level, so like a low, an, an, inter, an inter level, you know, not, not very efficient at all. So right. I, I mean, kind of like. So it just felt like sacrifice because you didn't know how to substitute for yeah. a more efficient way to yeah, do Yeah, now things. I know, now I know, but it's not something that just comes, you know, to you. It's, yes. It's, 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 it really feels an, like... it's an education in and of itself. I mean, yes. That's also why the book is so. <laughs> that, that's, the, that's essentially the education. That's the things I wish I had known. Um, so, uh, but then I came to the US, I got my first job here. Uh, as a physicist, that's not really a whole lot. As a very specialized person. And you not, moved where in the US? I went to South Bend in Indiana, the okay. University of Notre Dame. Uh, and I was a postdoc there. And uh, I don't know how I came about it, but I discovered stock investing. Uh, and your world opened up and you're like... Uh, yeah, it's kind of like, yeah. <coughs> because before that, I was, I was looking, everything was sitting on it as a, at, a, at a savings account at like 2%. Right. And, and I do remember at that point, I was kind of calculating what's going on. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the dog is running Frank around. Frank the dog, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I do remember sort of like, uh, if we have 100,000 in the bank at 2%, that's 2,000 a year. And the average human works 2,000 hours a year. So I'm effectively making $1 an hour now, not working. It's like, yes, passive income, $1 an hour. Extremely good, you know. Yeah, yeah. One dollar an hour, you know. <laughs> I can, you know, spend this mu uh, this much, you know. That's eight dollars a day. I can buy, buy so many books, right? Yes. So, uh, so but discovering investment, uh, in investing, that means in then instead of getting two percent, maybe I could get three percent. Uh, maybe five. Or well, maybe five percent, right? So that was like a lever on what I already had. Yes. Instead of starting from scratch, so, that, so now it's a few actually, bucks an hour. Yeah. All of a sudden. Yeah. yeah. And instead of you know spending five years to save, because I hadn't figured out the savings rate thing, I mean that was not on my radar. That savings rate was there was not such, no such thing as financial independence being on my radar. Right. Uh, I was just saving money and calculating my passive income. And these two concepts I I figured out or knew about somehow. Yeah. Uh, I kind of suspect probably came out of your money or life sort of like indirectly. I never read the book. I didn't get to read it until much later, but so many people had heard about it. Right, right. Their own interpretation. Uh, I mean, it's kind of similar to what's, what's happening with, with the ERE to some extent. You know, like it kind yes. of gets out and you don't know where it comes from. It's just something everybody knows. Um, compound interest for myself was like yeah. this. I remember I was in like a grade nine or 10 math class and we learned yeah. about compound interest. Yeah. And we actually discussed mortgages yeah. a little bit in the math oh, class. That's pretty advanced. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. my, my, my teacher brought something in that was like, it, was a, it wasn't a mortgage, but it was like a loan product that we yeah. had to calculate. We had to get like the present value and the future value. Yeah. And I remember doing present oh. value and future value in like grade 10. And this is <laughs> yeah, more of an advanced like thing. 15 or something. Yeah. <laughs> it was like a, a more advanced thing. And, and I remember yeah. like thinking about it. It might have been grade 11, actually. Yeah. It might have been yeah, grade 11. Still, still <laughs> in high school. And I remember that moment, it dawned on me that, you know, you're paying all this interest. I'm like, yeah. wait, so someone's paying for their house like triple yeah. if their mortgage is 10% rate of right, return. Because right, that yeah. was in, everyone just used 10% yeah, in yeah. the equations. Mm -hmm. And I, that, for me, it worked the other way too. I was like, well, wait, why isn't everyone so wealthy? Why aren't they paying me? You know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> why isn't everyone saving this money yeah. to buy a house? Why aren't they like super wealthy by the time they die? Right, right. Why isn't yeah. everyone a millionaire? Yeah. And he's like, well, people aren't, and that's when it's like, people aren't saving. And yeah. I just grew up very poor too. So. Yeah. 
having that, I was used to that baseline being very low. Mm -hmm. But sorry, continue yeah, with your uh, story uh, there. Where was I? So uh, you, you uncovered um, stock investing. Oh yeah, so like, uh, that, then you could actually start, start, start investing it for higher yield. Yeah. So I slowly started increasing that again, sort of starting from scratch, learning about uh, investing. I bought first, I bought some random stocks and I sold them again and that was fun. And then I got, of course, I, I, I tend to sort of start once I got a taste for it. I do the most complicated thing I can think of, uh, which in my case was options trading. Yes. So that's not something I would recommend. But High I, risk. I kind of, um, well, I did it in a, in a low risk. Okay. I, I, I did cover out options, but uh, it's still kind of advanced. I do the same thing with woodworking or anything I get into. Let's try to build the most complicated or complex thing first and then scale down again. Right. Uh, like, like, you know, going you know, a year without spending anything and then dialing back because right. then you know. Um, so it took me a while to kind of tune that in, but as I did it, you know, my, my yield kind of increased and my spending was already pretty low. And then I began to compare the two numbers. Um, that's kind of like what uh, Your Money, Your Life does, like uh, methodot methodically, you know, yes. with the cross out over diagram. I actually did not know that was a thing either. <laughs> what I instead had was a program I hacked up in Fortran <laughs> uh, Fortran 90, so I wasn't that old, but Fortran 90, showing two columns, you know, like uh, three columns, one with capital uh, and capital income and earned income and spending, and then projecting nice. that forward. So now I have that on a spreadsheet. But and you're like, wow, I'm going to be rich someday. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it would show like month by month, you know. And I was like, whoa, that, that's like a date there, right? And I'm approaching that. I mean, yes. that, is, that is effectively replicating the crossover diagram. It's just I had a, yes. had a Fortran program doing it for me. Uh, and you said, that you realize at this point, this I don't one, need to work anymore. Yeah, and the first day my that My passive happened, income covers yeah, all my expenses. Exactly. Uh, and the first day that happened, that was, that was a weird feeling. During, I guess. He went to work and there was an earth-shattering yeah, moment. Earth-shattering <laughs> earth moment there. But it I'm was, free! Yeah, yeah. Well, it was... It was